Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I thought I would give you some beginner tricks and tips for gel printing. Um, so let's just jump in. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So here's my gel plate. Um, I like to mount it on a piece of plexiglass because that way I can pick it up and move it around. I can see what's going on on the back side. I can actually also use it as a giant stamp if I want to. So that's cool. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first thing I would say, beginner tips for gel printing is get a couple of prayers. You want more than one because you always end up having more than one color on the go at a time. Um, if you are have different kind or different sizes of gel plates, you can get uh, different sizes of brayers as well. They have skinnier ones um, like this, which is a two inch. I don't use that very much because I like the big gel plate. So, you know, it takes forever with that one. All right, uh, let's just jump right in. I'm going to start with some paint and I'm just going to kind of go and we'll see how this goes. Uh, so I like to actually do my gel printing with two plates, uh, one next to the other. This one is mostly just for mixing paint or, um, you know, sometimes if you get textures on there that you want to save for something else or you need to, you know, it's just good to have another surface for that. Um, so I'm going to start with this teal paint and I'll just kind of um, go from there. So the first thing is that to make a good gel print, you really want a nice even coating of paint. Um, so the best way to do that is you use your brayer, that's what this is called, use your brayer to spread it out um, and every time you hit the end, so it's just rolling along and you hit the end and you pick it up because that way it moves the roller around so that you don't end up with the blotches all in the same spot. So you can just make a nice even coating. Uh, so it takes a bit sometimes you just kind of, you know, run your brayer over the gel plate see what you get. Okay, so that looks pretty even to me. Um, to clean your brayer, take it off to the side on a piece of scrap paper and you can just like roll it off. And that gets most of the paint off and a lot of the time that's good enough. Uh, so I always kind of have that off to the side of where I'm working as well. Um, the other thing that is totally your best friend is this wet wipes. Buy a lot at the dollar store because they're amazing for cleaning your hands and cleaning your brayer and everything. Um, okay, I am doing a big mistake here. I'm letting this paint dry on the plate when there's nothing in it. Um, so I'm going to use some things to maybe make some textures and stuff. So this is just a piece of packaging, essentially. Um, so I'm just going to use that to make some textures. So I'm essentially moving, removing some of the paint so that I can uh, get some textures and make some sort of a composition. So, um, did that, took some of the paint off. I'm gonna put a piece of cardstock on it. Hopefully it's not too dry. Uh, and then I'm just gonna rub this down really well. Doesn't need a ton of pressure. You just gotta be consistent and make sure it makes good contact with the, between the paper and the gel plate. Um, and you just kind of rub it around, make sure that everything is stuck. And here's a, here's a hot tip. If you, um, put on a little too much paint or are trying to do a pickup layer. I'll explain what that is later. Um, you want to kind of pay attention to the, the temperature of the paper because if it's too cold, that means the paint is still wet and it won't transfer properly. But this is fine. It's just one layer. We're just going to start with this and kind of build something up. So this is the first print. So here you can tell um, I've been using a dirty plate, which is totally fine because you end up with some of these like extra grudginess from the edge and from what's been on the plate before but that's kind of the fun of it part of the fun of it um so you can see I've got a little bit of um paint left on there there's just like traces of this teal color uh so I'm going to do what's called a pickup print um which I just kind of alluded to a minute ago where I'm going to make a really nice thin layer of some sort of a neutral color so in this case I'm using unbleached titanium just a little bit and I'm going to roll that out nice and thin. See, I picked that brayer up at the end, picked it up so that we get moving that paint around, moving that paint around. So this is a pickup layer, which means it's super nice and thin, and it's just going to let us pick up that extra texture that was on the plate onto some paper. So there we go. 
put that down, see what happens. Here's the other thing. When you put your brayer down, don't put it down roller side down, put it down side up because then you don't get paint everywhere. Just most places, not everywhere. All right, so I'm feeling for coolness. If it's slightly cool, it means it's not ready to go yet. This doesn't usually take very long though. Um, and you can kind of check it by peeking. So I'm just gonna peek and pull it up. And you can see here that I got some of that extra texture that we left behind from this print. So the other thing about jelly printing is that every print sort of has remnants of the print that was done before it. Um, so you could clean the plate totally, which I never do because it's not really worth it to get rid of that, or you could just kind of go with it. Sometimes you're working on something and you kind of have an idea of what you want to put on your next layer, but you end up with this great texture left over. So just pull a print with a neutral color and then you can use that for a background for something else later or collage or whatever you like. So that's that. Uh, all right, let's maybe, um, I'm gonna show you some tricks about uh, getting the right amount of paint on your plate. Um, so let's get rid of this. I'm gonna use a uh, quinacridone magenta because that's pretty much my favorite color. So I'm gonna put way too much paint on here and you're gonna see what happens. So that's way too much paint. You only need like a little piece size. Ooh, look at the veining there. That's kind of weird. I wonder if I can pick that up. See what I mean about having to respond to what's there before? I'm gonna do a little um, pick up print and see what happens. So really lightly, because I don't want the whole thing. I just want the texture. Ooh. Not a great print, but it is um, pretty spectacular, that texture. And I'm sure I will use that in some sort of collage. I'm going to seal this bit though, that's way too much paint for that. We can use that. Alright, so after I print, everything just goes on the floor behind me and it stacks up and uh, it'll be dry in like five minutes, but that's enough time for it to not get messed up. And we continue. So if you end up with some um, little bits of paint in there that are a different color that kind of um, are streaky, you can actually mix them in by swirling your brayer around like this. So this is how you mix paint if you wanted to mix colors. Actually, I got rid of some of the um, paint I was using there, so now there's not too much paint on the plate, but uh, let's show you how to mix some colors and what to do when there's too much paint on the plate. All right, so we've got some white. So if I roll through it, it doesn't really do anything, but if I wanna mix it up, I stir it, stir the pot. All right, so mixing that up. The other thing that you'll wanna pay attention to, especially as you um, get going and get better at it, is the opacity of your paints. Um, so layer and effects work differently depending on what your paint is, if it's opaque or if it's transparent. Um, and that's something you can use to your advantage. So I've got way too much ink on here, or paint on here, which is, fine for this. Um, I'm going to show you how to use a stencil and kind of what that looks like when there's too much paint. So probably can't see it. Um, all right, this is one of my stencils that I cut on my Cameo machine. Um, so I'm just going to pop it down and then I will use a piece of cardstock to pick up that paint. And when there's too much paint on there, I can feel it like sliding around a little bit. It's not great. It's also gonna give me goofy edges. So you can see the edges are really fuzzy um, and it's really not a clear print. Um, but there's one underneath because I didn't pick up all that paint. But this one is gonna be a little funny as well. So let me show you what that looks like. So less paint, I can feel it sticking better. It's not sliding around this time. So when I'm rubbing, I'm rubbing into uh, making sure that everywhere gets decent contact with the paper. And I'm going to pay special attention to where my stencils are and make sure that they get contact really well around the edges of the stencil. All right, so we're going to pull this one up. This is a better print, but because we had too much paint on the plate earlier, we get this like haloing effect. And it's, it's a cool effect, but it's, you know, not great if that's not what you're going for. 
So I'll show you the next print, uh, having the right amount of paint on the plate and you can see the difference. I'm gonna put that one right here right now. So after you've used the stencil, you can pull it up and you have another possibility of something to print underneath. And I'm gonna use uh, this one that we used, that we made before to pick up that paint. Okay, the thing about using stencils is you have to be super fast because if the paint dries on the plate, then you have to react to it that way. Um, this way I can just transfer it really quickly to a print that I already did, or even a print, like a new print. Um, but, you know, that's you, you, different ways of working, right? It takes a little bit of different uh, headspace to do it. Okay, so pulling this up, look at that. That's pretty fun, pretty cool. So because this is an opaque color, um, especially adding the white, you can see it blocks out the background. Um, but if it's a transparent color, it will definitely, the background will definitely influence the way that it um, comes through the color. So I'm gonna put that one aside. Uh, we got a little bit more um, ink on the plate there, or paint on the plate, just like a ghost. So I'm actually gonna try and pick that up with maybe a neutral color. I'm gonna go with unbleached titanium again, because that's my go-to. Just a tiny bit, because I only want a little bit. So I usually don't even really bother cleaning my brayers in between. Um, this is also why it's helpful to have more than one brayer, is if you uh, are using similar color families with the same brayer, it doesn't really affect too much. Uh, but you can always wipe it with a wet wipe if you want, just to get the color off so that you're not um, contaminating things. But again, all depends what you want and what you're cool with. And, you know, don't be a perfectionist with the gel plate because it's not for perfectionists. It's really not. There's more precise printmaking techniques that are probably better suited for you if that's the case. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, this is going to be a nice clean print. All right, so because that was so thin, it didn't take long to dry. So it picked up the... Um, halo effect in the um, leftover paint quite nicely. All right, so let's do one that has the right amount of paint on it. Um, I'm gonna go with the, uh, we're gonna go with a thalocyanine blue. And I'm actually, yeah, see, I'm actually gonna use my pink here, kind of mix it in. So I'm stirring, 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 stirring. And uh, we'll roll that out and use maybe the same stencil. And I'll show you what it looks like with the right amount of ink. Oh, see, you can see we got a little, little more pink to stir in there. Yeah, there we go. Nice, even coating. Okay, I'm gonna roll that off on my side paper. And then... That goes down. And what do we want to print that one on? I'm going to pick something else from earlier. I'm going to use this one. So put it upside down. Rub it in good. Quick before that paint dries. Pay special attention to this stencil. If you need a little more pressure, you can use your knuckles or even stand up. That usually works. Actually, when I just print, excuse me. When I gel print, I usually, um, I have a doctor's tool that I sit on in the studio and I usually just raise that up because it just gives me a little bit more leverage. You could also use what's called a Baron, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like a flat thing with a handle so you can get good contact everywhere. But for this process, I've never really seen the need for it, especially since they're not cheap. So, okay, let's see what we got. Oh, <laughs> so this one actually, pulled off the dried paint on the stencil, which is kind of fun. I think I'm going to leave it. So yeah, there's that. You can see the difference between the prints here, right? This one has a halo and kind of fuzzy edges, but this one is crisp. Nice, nice, nice crisp. All right. And then you can see there's my stencil with some of the paint that came off and the ghost print underneath. So I'm going to pick that up. Uh, pick that up with something maybe not so neutral. 
I think pink. Yellow. Let's go with the yellow. All right. I'll pull out the. Here, again, just a little bit. You only need like. It's like toothpaste, you know? You only need that much. A little bit goes a long way. So. When you're trying to pick up an image that's on the plate already, you don't want to stir because if you stir, that'll just mix up all the paint, whether it's dry or not, and your image will just totally disappear. All right, so that's so thin that you can see it's transparent, even though the paint is actually opaque. All right, we're gonna give it a minute, let it warm up so it's not cool anymore. Uh, and that will make sure that that paint has adhered really well. In the meantime, when that happens, I like to just kind of wipe down my brayer because, you know, otherwise it's got like coatings of seven different colors on it. <laughs> it's fine. It's really fine. As long as it's not affecting the color that you want on the plate, it doesn't really matter. You can always clean your brayer lighter too. Um, things like um, alcohol work really well for that. Um, also, I've heard uh, Murphy's oil soap works really well for that, but most of the time I don't worry too much about it. Mine are always kind of like a little bit rainbow colored, but that's totally fine. Okay, let's see how we're doing. I'm going to peek and pull it up. Okay, not a spectacular pin print, but that is a good background for something else. Um, yeah, so let's see. What else should I do? Um, there's all kinds of things that you can use for texture tools. Um, I've made a few other videos about that already. Whether they're posted or not might be another story, but if they're not on my YouTube, they're in the works. Oh, I should show you this. Okay. So sometimes, I'll go with purple. Pea sized, toothpaste sized. And for a smaller plate, of course, you need less paint. You don't have to, um, you don't have to ink the whole plate either, you know. If you wanted to do just a certain portion, you can. You also don't have to put your, um, paper on completely square. You could just do, like, half of it. Whatever you like, whatever makes sense. If you have things like this, just wipe them out with your finger. Oops. And re-roll. If you get briar lines, roll lighter. And maybe a different direction. But as long as they're not too bad, they're not too bad. Um, so here's something I'll show you. This is from, uh, this is a stencil. Well, it's not a stencil. It's a placemat from the dollar store. One that I happen to really like. Um, so I'm just going to put that down like this. And the best thing to do, especially with thicker things, like you can see this has got a bit of dimension to it. It's going to be really hard to get that. Um, that ink out of the empty spots with a regular piece of paper or a thicker piece of paper like hard stuff. But I have this fancy deli paper, which is super thin. Um, uh, tracing paper or tissue paper would work well for this too. But I can just kind of like put it down, smooth it out, and use my fingers to kind of work into the holes. And that will pick up a lot of the paint that's in there and will give me a better impression of this particular texture. So I'm just using my fingertips. I'm not super concerned about this paper because it'll, I mean, it'll get used for collage, but quite honestly, the way I'm so um, hard on them, they often rip and then it's not, it's not like a finished piece anyway. It's more like just a pickup paper to I'll get a lot of that ink out of the holes or the paint out of the holes. And so you want to pay close attention to the edges because you know sharp edges always look better. Uh, pull that out. See, pulling it all out. This is good for collage afterwards too because you can kind of layer it over other things. Um, but here, so I take that off. Boom. I could also do it again. But I don't really need to. And there we go. So let's pick that up with the piece of cardstock. I 
could pick it up right away or let it dry and then put more layers on top. There's lots of ways you can make um, marks, make textures, um, using things, garbage a lot of the time is fun. You could use things like forks. Um, I've done a few other videos about ways you can, you know, make patterns and textures and stuff on the gel plate. But really, you know, look around your house, see what's um, interesting and what's useful. So there's one print. Um, I can tell that the ink is starting to get really dry because I've got a lot left on the plate. That's okay. I'm going to put some other paint over top and we will see what else we can get. Let's go with this Quinacridone, my favorite, oh, and see what happens. <laughs> okay, pea size. Okay, no. Um, I mean, I'm going to use the roller part. I'm not going to swish it around because I want to keep that texture. There's that. All right, so I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use this stencil. This is one that I've made on my um, cameo, and I'm gonna use no, I'm gonna use a flat regular piece. So let's just see. I want to get that texture um, with the two colors on this one. Okay. Yeah. See, I can push it down and uh, re-burnish if I need to a little bit before it moves. Didn't really do a lot, but that's okay. See, texture, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Here we got a bit of something stuck in there, but that's okay. Um, all right, and so now I have a little imprint left with a little bit of texture under it. And I have to kind of respond to what's there. So maybe, maybe I'll go with this. No, that's gonna be really cool. We're gonna go with the pink. We're gonna go with the pink. Okay, so here's the pink. was a little wet so it smeared that's okay and put it down like that okay this one I mean again not a spectacular print but it make a good background for something so um, anyway, I think that's uh, some good tips for beginners on the gel plate. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will respond. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.